Hello, this is Mr. Best. Welcome to Chapter 9, questions 114 to 119. While setting up a mathematical sentence to solve a problem, Paulina and Aaliyah came up with the equations below. Since the equations did not look alike, the girls turned to you for help. So you see Paulina's equation and Aaliyah's equation. Are these equations equivalent? That is, will the graph of each line be the same? Explain how you know. Uh, so there's always a couple ways you can do some of these problems, but... Uh, what I'm looking at is if we can put these into slope-intercept form and then compare the slopes and the y-intercepts, we'll have an idea as to whether they are the same. So I'm going to take Paulina's equation 4x plus 2y equals 6 and subtract 4x to both sides. And then that will give me 2y is equal to negative 4x plus 6. Divide everything by 2 and y is equal to negative 2x plus 3. Uh, for Aaliyah's equation, we have 12x plus 6y equals 18. And so on this one, we can subtract 12x. Get 6y equals negative 12x plus 18. And then divide everything through by 6. Negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2x. 18 divided by 6 is 3. So you can look at both equations now. They're exactly the same. So are these equations equivalent? Yes, they are. Uh, that is, will the graph of each line be the same? So once again, yes, they will. And then explain how we know. We wrote them in slope-intercept form, and the equations were equivalent. So that's one way to do it. I'm going to show you a second way to look at it. If you look at Paulina's and you notice this, if you actually take Paulina's equation and multiply by 3, that will give you 12x plus 6y equals 18, and now when you compare the two equations, they are exactly the same. So even though we didn't write them in slope-intercept form, by multiplying is by multiplying uh, Paulina's equation by 3, we can see that the equations are equivalent that way also. So just another way to look at it. Part B, find another equation that is equivalent to both of these. How did you find your equation? Well, look what we just did in terms of Paulina's. If we multiply it by 3, we get the, the same equation. So what if we take Paulina's equation... And it doesn't really matter which equation we take, but if we take Paulina's, and instead of multiplying by 3, what if we only multiply by 2? That will give us 8x plus 4y equals 12. So there's another equation that is equivalent to Paulina's. By multiplying every term by 3, or even dividing every term by a number, you're not changing in terms of what, where that line is located. Okay? So you can multiply by positive numbers, negative numbers, fractions, whatever, um, and you get all sorts of different equations but they would represent the same line. Question 115. The town you live in has decided to limit the amount of trash thrown out each month. Your town, which has 3,280 homes, has asked each household to keep track of how many pounds of trash they produce during a month. In addition, the town council has found that other sources of trash, such as local businesses, combine to create 1,500 pounds of trash each month. If the town has a goal of creating less than 50,000 pounds of trash, how much trash should a household be limited to? Write an inequality for this situation and solve it. So what is it that we're trying to, trying to find? We're trying to figure out how much trash should a household be limited to. Trash is being measured in, in pounds. So we need to write a let statement here. Um, we can let, you know, whatever T or X or whatever you want to pick, I'm going to do T for trash. So let e, T equal the uh, number of uh, pounds. Uh, number of, or, yeah, number of pounds of trash. Okay, so I changed it. But pounds of household trash. Uh, so that's going to be T. We need to write an inequality for the situation. So what do we have? We have 3,280 homes. So for each home, we're going to say that they uh, have so many pounds of trash on average. So 3,280 times T. And then we need to include that the local businesses combine, so not individually, but combine to create 1,500 pounds of trash. So we will take that and add 1,500 to it. Okay? Okay. And the goal is, is the town wants something less than 50,000 pounds. So we want this to be less than 50,000 pounds of trash. 
All right, so now we can go ahead and solve this. Let's subtract the 1,500 from both sides. Let's divide by 3,280. And that is approximately uh, 14 point, we'll say 0.8 pounds of trash per household. So once again, that's per household on average that we're talking about. And that's an approximation. So write any, uh, inequality for this situation and solve it, which we did. But we need to answer the question, how much trash should a household be limited to? So we can say that each household is limited to, and it is less than, it's not equal to, is less than 14.8 uh, pounds of trash. And so we've written the inequality, we have solved the inequality, and now we have answered the question as well. Question 116. Solve the following inequalities for each of the given variables and represent the solutions on a number line. So on number two, or sorry, part A, two, we're going to change it to equal to because we want to create that boundary line, uh, or the, in this case, that boundary point. So let's add eight to both sides. So we get 10 is equal to 2m divided by 2. m is equal to 5. So on my number line, here's 0, here's 5. If I test the point, 0, that will give me 2 equals 2 times 0 minus 8 or not equals, we need to change that back to the original inequality. 2 is less than 2 times 0 minus 8, so 2 is less than negative 8. That is not true. So right here at x equals 0, or in this case m equals 0, this is false. So we don't want to go in that direction. We want to go to the right of 5. And it is an open circle because it's not included. It doesn't have the equal to sign. Don't forget to write the solution as an inequality. So it's not m equals 5, it is m is greater than 5. So we have the number line and we have the inequality. All right, on to b. 1 third x minus 1 is equal to negative 3. Once again, going to find the boundary point first. So 1 third x is equal to negative 2 multiply both sides by 3, x is equal to negative 6. So uh, at negative 6, you have 0, negative 6 is over here. It is a closed circle because it is included. It does have the equal to sign there. And then we test the point 0. For x equals 0, we're going to plug that in. That will be 1 third times 0 minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 3. So is negative 1 less than or equal to negative 3? No, that is not true. So once again, at 0, it's false. So we need to go in the other direction. And then our inequality is x is less than or equal to negative 6. All right, on C, I'm going to go ahead and distribute while, we, while I write it down as an equal uh, equation. So this would be 10x minus 40 plus 24 is greater than 3 times that quantity, so that would be 12 plus 6x. And so I'm going to change that to an equal sign there. All right, let's combine our like terms. We have 10x uh, minus 16 is equal to 12 plus 6x. Subtract the 6x to both sides. 4x minus 16 equals 12. Add 16. 4x equals 28. Divide by 4. x is equal 7. So at 7, we have an open circle. And then we are going to test the value of 0. And so if we do that, I'm going to go and plug it in to the original. So it's 5, and I'm just going to put zeros in for our, my variable terms. So that would be 5 times negative 8 plus 24. Is that greater than uh, 3 times 
4 because the other part's going to be 0. So it looks like we get negative 40 plus 24 is greater than 12. Or is negative 16 greater than 12? And that is not true. That is false again. So at 0, it's false. So we want to go in the other direction. And so therefore, we would have all values of x that are greater than 7. All right, on to D. So we have 5 plus 2K is less than K minus 2 plus K. So we'll combine our like terms. We'll write it as an equal sign again. This would be 2K minus 2. Uh, subtract the 2K from both sides, and what we notice is the variable is no longer there. So 5 is not equal to negative 2, but this is an inequality, so we need to be careful here in terms of what we're looking at. Um, we don't have a number anymore that is our boundary point. So let's just test a point in any point and see what happens. We'll test 0 and see what happens. We have 5 plus 0 is less than 0 minus 2 plus 0. And so 5 is less than negative 2. So even though 5 does not equal negative 2, we have to look at the inequality because depending on which direction the inequality goes, we would have a true or a false statement. In this case, 5 is not less than negative 2, so it's false at 0. And since that really represents your whole section because we have no boundary point, then that means that there are no values of x that when you plug in will ever give you, or in this case k, will ever give you a solution that is true. So therefore, this one is a no solution. And on your number line, you don't need anything because there's no values that will work. Question 117. Solve the quadratic equation below twice, once using the quadratic formula and once by completing the square, which was easier. All right. So we'll just go in order here. We'll start with the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, we do need to set it equal to 0, so that's x squared minus 10x. Uh, if I add the 4 to both sides, that gives me 25 is equal to 0. So now we know a is 1, b is negative 10, and c is 25. So we have x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so the opposite of negative 10 is 10, so we'll fix that in a second, plus or minus the square root of negative 10 squared, make sure that's in parentheses, minus 4 times 1 times 25 divided by 2 times 1. So that will be x equals positive 10 plus or minus the square root, and if you plug all that in, you'll get 100 minus 100, which is 0, divided by 2, so we have 10 plus or minus 0 over 2, and so even if you break this up into two parts, it's 10 minus 0 divided by 2, and 10 plus 0 divided by 2, so x is equal to 5 in both cases, so we have only one x-intercept, and that's at 5, 0, so my solution is x equals 5. Now on the next method we're looking at is completing the square. So we're going to use completing the square to solve this one. So we'll leave it in the same form, x squared minus 10x plus 21, or 20, we'll just leave it as 25 plus 0 since we already solved it for 0. We have to figure out what's going to allow us to create a perfect square here. So we have an x squared, and then the negative 10x, because we are completing the square, this has to be... Uh, the same side length. So therefore, we have a square of x minus 5 and x minus 5. Now, what number, how many tiles do you need to make a perfect square? You would need 25. Well, in this problem, you already have the 25, so you don't need to add anything else to complete the square. This already is a perfect square trinomial with side lengths of x minus 5, and it's equal to 0. So you take the square root of both sides, that's the absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to 0. And then normally we would have two equations, one where x minus 5 could equal negative 0, and the other one where it could equal positive 0. 
But since 0 is neither positive nor negative, you're going to add 5 either way and still get 5, so your solution is x equals 5. Um, it does ask which one is easier. That's your opinion in terms of which one is easier there. Uh, you have the quadratic formula or completing the square. And we actually could have done this one a third way because we are getting nice answers. We could have factored this as well. Question 118. Read the following problem, then decide which system of equations below can represent this situation. It's a multiple choice. The length of a rectangle is 4 units longer than twice its width. If the area is 128 square units, find the length and the width. So we need to identify our variables. You can see that they chose to use L and W, so we'll do the same thing. Let L equal the uh, length of the rectangle. And then we will let W equal the width of the rectangle. All right, first thing it says, the length of a rectangle is, all right, is a lot of times means equal to. So the length of the rectangle is four units longer than twice its width. So twice is multiplication, four units longer is addition. So four units longer than twice the width. So 2w plus 4 would represent the length, and then the width um, it's just W. I mean, that's in terms of what it is. There's nothing else that represents that. We have the W there. So we know the, the W represents the width of the rectangle. If the area, oops, if the area is 126 units squared, find the length and the width. Well, that would be 126 area. Um, and how do you find area? Well, area is equal to length times width. So we know the area is length times width, so we could say this is 126 is equal to the length, which is 2w plus 4, but what is the width? Well, the width is just w, so I'm going to put the w in front, w times 2w plus 4, okay? So what we're looking at is trying to pick which one of these matches. Well, the length is 2w plus 4, that's right there. Uh, it's also down here as well. So it looks like those two, and then what else do we have? Well, this one says length plus width is 128, but we're doing area. This one says length times width is 126. So we actually wrote it out like this, but it's still 126 is equal to the, the width times the length or the length times the width. So it represents the same thing. So it looks like our answer for question 108 would be uh, answer D. Question 119. This problem is a checkpoint for writing exponential functions. It will be referred to as checkpoint number 9. Write an exponential equation to represent the situation and answer the question. So we're going to be writing an equation and then answering the question. If the cost of a loaf of bread is now $2.75 and is increasing at 5% per year, what will the cost be 10 years from now? So we're not going right to answer the question. We've got to write this out. We have the 2.75. This is your um, initial. That's what you're starting with. Remember, our generic or general form is y is equal to a. a represents the, the initial. b is your multiplier. And then x is what you're raising it to. So our initial is 2.75. Our multiplier, well, it's increasing at a rate of 5% per year. But it's increasing. But we always start at 100%. So we're going to add on an additional 5%. So 105% as a decimal is 1.05. So that represents your B value because of the increase. And then the X is, in this case, time. But we're not going to put the 10 just yet. We want to write the equation. So Y is equal to the initial $2.75 for the bread times the multiplier of 1.05 raised to the X power. So that's writing the exponential equation. To answer the question, we are going to plug in 10 years for x. Plug that into your equation and see what the cost would be of the bread in 10 years. So I want to round to the nearest cent, 4.479, which would be 4.48. So the bread in 10 years will cost approximately, don't forget your dollar sign, $4.48 cents. All right, let's take a look at B. The population of flood 
Flood River City is now 42,000. Experts predict the population will decrease 25% each year for the next five years. What will be the population in five years? So what do we know here? We know it's initially 42,000, so we have, that's our initial. Um, it's decreasing at 25%, so we start at 100%, we decrease 25%, and that would be 75%. So as a decimal, 0 0.75, that's your B value. So we know our initial is 42,000 times our multiplier, it's decreasing, so it's going to be less than 1, 0 0.75 raised to the x power. And we want to know what the population will be in five years approximately, so y is equal to 42,000 times 0 0.75 raised to the fifth power. And calculate that. So since we're doing population, we went around to the nearest person, 9,966.7, so we'll do 67. So in five years, the po uh, population is predicted to be approximately 9,967 people. So make sure you write that statement, once again, answering that question. Part C, a share of orange stock that was worth $25 in 2000 was worth $60 in 2010. What is the multiplier and the percent increase? All right, on this one, it's not giving us uh, any percent here. We actually have to figure it out. So um, this represents the value in the year 2000 or in the year zero. So if we set that up as an equation, well, we could say 25 is what the value will be. If we don't know what A is, and we don't know what B is, but we know that's at time 0, we can solve for A. So this would be 25 equals A times B to the 0 is 1. So we know A is 25, which I guess we didn't necessarily have to do that because that's our initial value anyway. So we kind of knew A was already 25. But now, we're going to do the same thing with the other equation. $60 is the final uh, we know A is 25, we don't know B, but we know we're going to look at it in 10 years because we're going from 2000 to 2010. So how do we solve for B? Well, we'd have to divide by 25, so that will be 2.4 equals B to the 10th power. Well, how do you undo B to the 10th power? The same way you undo B to the 2nd power, take the square root. But since it's the 10th power, we have to take the 10th root of both sides. So B is equal to... If you take the 10th root, um, depending on how your calculator is, uh, depends on how you plug this in, but if you do the 10th root of 2.4, you get approximately 1.09. So that would be your multiplier. So it says, what is the multiplier? So the multiplier is 1.09. And what is the percent increase? Well, that's the multiplier. So remember, we started at 100%. To get to 109, or 1.09, we had to add 9%. And that would have got us to the 109%, which is B, 1.09. So the percent increase is 9%. So it's a 9% increase. And so your equation would be Y equals your initial of 25 times 1.09 raised to the X value. So there's your equation. Here's your multiplier. And here's your percent increase. And since this is a checkpoint, um, you can refer to the answers in the Checkpoint 9 materials. And once again, ideally at this point, you are comfortable working with these types of problems and can solve them correctly. If you feel that you need more confidence when solving these types of problems, then review the Checkpoint 9 materials and try the practice problems provided. From this point on, you will be expected to do problems like these correctly and with confidence.